are so excited to be back with you for this week's Saturday stream. Um, as you know, a lot of things have changed since our first video back on uh, April 4th. Um, the biggest changes that are taking place right now are the lifting of some of these restrictions that we've been experiencing over um, the last month. And all across our country, small businesses everywhere are starting to make decisions on what to do over the next coming weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are trying to decide if they're going to reopen. And if they do, um, what that's going to look like, what is going to be the new normal right now. And our church is no different. You know, here at Faith Baptist, our church staff has been praying and trying um, to seek God's face on what to do next over the next weeks and months ahead. And so, you know, as we think about all this, I'm excited because one thing is not changing right now, and that is our Saturday streams. Yeah. We have prayed and talked about it, and we're going to go forward um, through the month of May with our Saturday streams, and you're not going to want to miss uh, this coming up month. Please join us on Saturdays at 10 o'clock, just like we have uh, through the month of April. We're going to be hearing from different ladies in our church over the coming month, and we're going to be doing some fun things uh, next week for Mother's Day, and so you're not going to want to miss uh, what we're going to be doing here in the coming weeks. You know, with all of these changes that are underway, I hope that we recognize the opportunity that we have right now. I heard a quote um, a couple of weeks ago, and it's really stuck with me. And it said, in the rush to return to normal, use this time to decide which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. And I thought that was really, really good. You know, ladies, it's almost like we have a do-over, a chance mm -hmm. um, to, to look at our lives and to say, what do we want them to look like as we go forward, as we re-enter um, society? What is most important to give our time and attention to? It brings to my mind a time in biblical history where the nation of Israel had an opportunity for a fresh start. Um, if you look at the book of Deuteronomy, at the very beginning of the book, we see that the Israelites are about to enter the promised land. And um, God had brought them out of slavery in Egypt. And they're standing there on the brink of the promised land. And before they go in, Moses says, hold up, stop just a second, because he wants to give them a word of caution and some encouragement as they enter into the land. And he, the whole thing that he's trying to talk to them about is he doesn't want them to fall back into the same patterns mm -hmm. that they were in before going into the promised land. And I think that's very important as we look at our lives right now. We have an opportunity to look at things and we have the opportunity to say, what do I want to rush back into? And I think that's a very good question. We're going to be, over the next five weeks, we're going to be looking at Deuteronomy 6, this specific chapter, and we're going to be talking about five things that we feel like are worth rushing back into. These are the things that Moses talked to the Israelites about, and so we want to share these things with you, and we hope you'll join with us as we look at these five things. And so we're going to jump in today, and Katie, why don't you start out by reading as Deuteronomy 6, and then um, just introducing what we're going to talk about this week specifically. Sure. Okay, ladies, so in Deuteronomy 6, chapter 1, it says, Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it that it may be well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your home and on your gates. So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities which you did not build, houses full of all good things which you did not fill, cisterns which you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees which you did not plant. When you have eaten and are full, then beware, lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him, and you shall take oaths in his name. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people who are all around you. For the Lord your God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Lord your God be aroused against you and destroy you from the face of the earth. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massa. You shall 
diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, his testimonies and his statutes which he commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with you, and that you may go in and possess the good land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. So ladies, what we really want to focus on this first week you know, as we are taking that step back into um, society, things are opening up, things are going to get busy again. What we really want to focus on this first week is found in verse 5. Um, and it says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And we really want to focus there for this first week. You know, that is worth rushing back to. Mm -hmm. And this was the first instruction that Moses gave them. And that's because it's the most important. Mm. Above everything else, this is important that we really love him supremely. Mm. And so, you know, I know, Stacy, there are just so many things we as women love. Mm. And so we wanted to reach out to some women from Fayette and ask them, what are some things that you love and that you really love giving your time to? So let's watch and see what they had to say. I absolutely love teaching preschool, as you can see. This is one of three cabinets that I have in my garage that is stocked full of curriculum, teaching supplies, cardstock, you name it, I got it, probably have four or five of them. God has truly blessed me with a passion to teach preschoolers, and best of all, I get to be paid to do it. Um, I love to teach, I love my kids, and um, this is what I am passionate about. So something that I absolutely love is working out. So as you can tell, this is my home gym and my passion is the spin bike and I can prove it to y'all. Look at all the sweat stains over there. Means hours and hours and then spinning. I love to be on the go and the miles on my car prove it. Well, I love those things, you know, and I think that's so true. I can relate to those and I can say, I love running. And if you open my closet, all the running shoes I have would prove that, you know? And so we all have those things that we love. Um, and none of these things are bad. They're good. They can be good things, you know, but ultimately I think what we have to be careful of, the Bible is very clear about. Above all these other things, what we are to love the most is God and give him our time and really devote that time to him. So the question that we really want to focus on is what does that really look like in our life? Mm -hmm. What does it look like to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all our might? Well, again, we asked the ladies what they thought about that. Let's see what they had to say on this. Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul is believing what scripture says. Two and a half years ago, I was on my way to, for a biopsy when the side of my face started swelling from a problem I had had with my saliva gland. I was already anxious and nervous with the biopsy, but this really increased the anxiety that I was having. As soon as I arrived at West Clinic, I went to the restroom to be by myself. I cried out to God and asked Him to please take the swelling away while I was having the biopsy. I just did not feel like I could handle both. And immediately, the swelling went down. I had my biopsy, and halfway home, I started swelling again. And in that moment, I thank God for answering my prayers and getting me through the biopsy. As I strive to live out Mark 12, 30, by loving the Lord with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, all my strength, I think of Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of my heart. And I truly believe that I have sought the Lord for the past two and a half years. I have had a failed marriage and the aftermath of that. Um, the Lord has walked me through every single step of that. He has provided for me beyond imagine. Um, and I have changed dramatically. My prayer life is more intimate and more meaningful. Um, I'm in the Word daily. Um, I have truly sought the Lord and He and I found Him. Loving God with all my mind, 
with all my heart, with all my soul. I think that means being completely and totally in awe of who God is and what he's done in my life. Many times when I think about how he took me out of Russia and brought me to United States to go to a Christian school, how he brought different people along my path to do different things. I'm completely in awe of how that puzzle has fit so wonderfully and beautifully together. I could have never thought that that puzzle would turn out to be my life. I have always wanted to do what God would want me to do. And that means spending time with him through prayer, knowing his heart, knowing his direction for my life. Even now I realize as I'm growing and on this Christian journey that unfortunately I don't do what I'm supposed to do majority of the time, but God is still so faithful and so loving and so kind. My biggest desire is to be so consumed with God that I cannot wait to see him one day, that I cannot wait to hear his voice. My desire is to be able to hear his still small voice every day of my life. And I guess that's what it means for me to love my God with all my heart, soul, and mind. Well, I think everything that these ladies had to say is so good yes. and it's so true. You know, when I think about loving God with all of my heart and all of my soul and all of my might, I just believe that means my entire being. Mm -hmm. It means everything. You know, I'm supposed to love God with everything. And I love one of the quotes that Tony Evans said. He said, some of us Christians love God with some rather than with all, yet we want all of God. But you can't love God some and love the world some because these two are antithetical to one another. That's so true. I think for all of us, um, our love for God can show up in two main ways. Those two ways are in our obedience and our time. Now, talking about that first one, many people do not think about obedience being correlated with love, but it really does have a lot to do with, one has a lot to do with the other. Uh, most of you ladies know that Katie and I are sisters, and um, we have an amazing father. Yeah. I mean, my dad is the best. I hate to say it, but my dad's better than yours. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but our dad is a great dad. But I can remember growing up, he so many times would tell me that I had to do something that I didn't want to do, or he would tell me that I couldn't do something that I did want to do, and I would get so angry. But at the end of the day, I usually obeyed him. Mm -hmm. Was it because I wanted to do what he was saying? No, it was because I loved him. And you know, I loved my dad so much that I wanted to please him. I loved him so much that I didn't want to displease him. And I think for us as believers, you know, we need to ask ourselves, do I follow God's commands? Because if we love him, we're going to want to please him. We're going to want to follow him with our whole hearts. And so we need to ask ourselves that, are we obedient children? That's going to show how much we love God. But another way is our time. And um, it is true that we should be asking ourselves, how much time do I give to the Lord? Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you ladies know Pastor Drew is my husband, and I just have to tell you something about him. He is a great gift giver. <laughs> I mean, the guy knows how to give really good gifts. He's that guy who on his birthday gave me an Apple Watch. I mean, I love that about my husband. He has given me lots of really cool gifts over the years. Um, he's given me laptops. He's given me iPads. He's given me... Um, cameras, all kinds of fun things, but my favorite gift that he ever gave me was something really unique. Um, we were going through a really difficult time in ministry and difficult, difficult time in life, and I came home one day, and there was a gift on the floor for no reason, and he said, I just wanted to give you a gift. Open it up, and so I opened the gift up, and in the box was a very inexpensive little clock. I think it still had the $2.88 um, uh, thing on it from, from the store, and underneath it was a calendar, and it was a blank calendar. And he looked at me, and he just said, babe, I wanted to give you my time. He mm -hmm. said, I want to give you my time. 
And that meant so much to me. Yeah. That was better than any other gift that he could give me. And that night we sat down together and we just looked at our calendar and we filled in things where that we could spend time together as a couple, time together as a family. And that proved his love to me. Mm -hmm. It showed me that he cared about me because he was willing to give me something that was very valuable and that was his time. And you know, if we love God, we're going to want to spend time with him. We're not going to be satisfied with one hour a week on Sunday mornings spending time at church or online. We're not going to be okay with that. We're going to want to give our time to God because we love him so much. Probably all of us have been in relationships or friendships at some time in our life where that, that person's told us, I love you so much, I care about you so much, but then they never text, they never call, they mm -hmm. never spend time with us. And after a little while, we begin to doubt their love because time equals love. I mean, that shows our love for someone when we spend time with them. And so, Katie, I think that we can ask ourselves, you know, do I really love God with my whole heart? Well, it's going to show if we're obedient children and if we give him our time. You know, that's so true, Stacey, and I love that. I love the story of the clock. That's really cool. Mm. But, you know, uh, I know we've heard this quote before. Um, I've heard Pastor Drew say it, and it's, you know, if you really want to know what someone loves, check their calendar and their checkbook, mm -hmm. and it'll tell. Yeah. And, I mean, that's very true because our time shows mm -hmm. what we love and what we want to willingly give our time to, you know. But, unfortunately, as women, and we have a lot of things going on, there are just a lot of distractions mm -hmm. to distract us from that time that we really want to commit to the mm -hmm. Lord. And so, again, we want to think about some of those distractions and how we can do better about those when we go back in to busyness of life. And so once again, we asked our ladies what they thought about this and what they had to share. So let's see what they had to say on this. Many times we get so distracted with activities of daily life. We get distracted of goals. Of We get distracted by trying to be better. Instead of seeing how we can get closer to God, we are trying on our own to achieve something that is not achievable. And I think that what prevents us from loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind, us, our own selves, trying to be better, that what stops us. Instead of focusing on Him and Him alone and knowing that He will guide us because He created the works, the good works He wants us to walk in, not us ourselves creating those works, but He did. And if we focus on that, we will accomplish being able to love the Lord our God with our soul with our whole heart and with our whole mind. There are so many things in life that distract us from our families, our jobs, everyday responsibilities, and just things that we like to do. But until we um, have a grateful heart, humble ourselves, and have a repentant spirit, we cannot love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. It is so easy to let the busyness of life overtake my schedule. I sometimes allow everyday duties to creep in and steal time that I should be using to serve the Lord. Although I'm not doing anything necessarily wrong, I'm not using my time wisely and being fruitful for the kingdom. Well, you know, Stacey, everything they had to share really are very real distractions. Mm -hmm. You know, we all face different distractions, but one I think across the board that we all face is busyness. Yeah. And yeah. this has been a really unique time to just have that kind of slow down, but busyness is a very real distraction mm -hmm. from even the things, that, the time that we want to commit to the Lord. And so as we begin to re-enter society, you know, we're going to be back at the ball fields, at mm -hmm. work, um, at church, you know, doing ministry things. All these things are going to come back into our lives, and we have a time to choose now. You know, what all am I going to return to? How am I going to guard my relationship with the Lord and keep that as my priority? You know, another distraction that I think we all face is culture, um, social media, mm -hmm. and entertainment. Yeah. You know, we all love those things, and if we're honest, we know that our phones can be a, an addiction. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, as I researched that, one study showed that Americans typically are on their phones between four and five hours a day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I know that myself and other ladies I've talked to have said things like, you know, I just don't have time to do that Bible study or I don't have time to invest in that. And so I think we really need to think about that before life gets busy again, mm -hmm. of how we can prioritize those things and set parameters for ourselves in that area. Um, even good things can be distractions. You know, our mm -hmm. family, our kids, our church, um, those are all great things. 
but they're not to take priority over the Lord and our relationship with him. And so I wanted to share just some practical tips that we had for how do we attack these distractions and how can we be, do better about keeping the Lord in first priority? So um, four things that I wanted to share real quickly is plan ahead, um, be intentional with your calendar, have a grateful heart, and pray. And so when I say plan ahead, you know, a quote that I've always personally loved is if you fail to plan, you can plan to fail. Mm. And I love that quote because I have seen that played out in every area of my life where I fail to make a plan. Um, things just don't happen. Things aren't going to naturally happen um, in a successful way like that. And so, you know, if I don't make my time with the Lord a priority, um, a lot of times it's not going to happen. It's going to, mm -hmm. you know, that time's going to be stolen from me. So for me, what that looks like is setting a regular time each day um, to have that time with the Lord. So um, whatever time works for you, but set that time, have that down, and then be prepared for that time. You know, have your things ready. I have a particular place that I do my quiet time every day. Have your notebook, your pen, and your Bible ready, and just be very intentional and guard that time. Another thing that I really like to do um, is I really try to plan for the down times that I'm going to have in my day. Mm -hmm. You know, it can be very easy to say we don't have time to do something, but anytime there's some open time, we just pick up our phone and waste time. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I know that those down times may be like car line when I'm waiting on my kids, um, when I'm waiting on an appointment, things like that. And so I try to plan ahead and be prepared for those times. Um, one thing that has greatly enhanced my walk with Christ and has really been um, an area of discipleship for me has been Christian books. And I've really, really grown through Christian books that I've read. And so um, when I know that I'm going to an appointment or I'm going to be in car line, I'll try to have a book with me so that I can do that rather than just hopping on my phone every time and wasting time. Um, another thing, like I said, the phone is an addiction. For some reason, we just want to pick up our phone when we have a minute. So I do try to have things on my phone that I can do that do benefit me mm -hmm. and really, um, again, help in my walk with Christ. I love, I have a scripture memory app that's kind of like a game that helps you memorize your scripture. I love that. Um, I have the first five mm -hmm. app, which really, every time I read that, I'm just encouraged by mm -hmm. the daily devotionals. So just being in tune with those moments that you have throughout the day where that really it's a temptation just to waste time, mm -hmm. but instead we can really prioritize our time. So I love all those things. You know, when I give God my time, I will grow. Um, Jeremiah 29, 13 tells us, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And I believe that, you know, in my life, that just looks like I desire him more than I desire other things. Mm -hmm. You know, I desire to, even if I have five minutes, let me, let me just spend that drawing closer to the Lord. So I encourage you to just discipline yourself in that area. Um, the last thing that has really helped me in that area of planning ahead is I have this little book that a dear friend gave me. It's the one year praying the promises of God book. And this has been a real asset to me because when I'm tired at the end of the day and you literally feel like you just don't even want to think another moment, mm -hmm. you know, I can just pick up this book and it has just a little prayer for the day. And I really love it because I can kind of bookend my day in prayer. Mm -hmm. I can start my day in prayer and I can end my day in prayer. And that really prioritizes mm -hmm. my relationship with Christ. So those are a couple things I do. Um, the next thing is be intentional with your calendar. I love how you shared that he just opened up his calendar because, you know, like you said, what we do with our time shows mm -hmm. where our heart is. Um, so I have two books that I want to share that really helped me in this area. The first one is The Best Yes, and this is a Lisa Turkhurst book that I did a few years ago. And then also another one that I've done is called The New Eve. And I did this um, study at my previous church. And both of these really helped me to understand and really think through how to prioritize my time mm -hmm. and how to really um, make good decisions. And so um, in the best, yes, one of the things I learned is that when I say yes to something, I'm also saying no to something else. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't view our um, decisions that way. But, you know, if I say yes to having every one of my four kids in a different sport in the same season, then I'm probably saying no to family dinner times. Yeah. You know, if I say yes to that new promotion at work, you know, I may be saying no to ministry opportunities mm. or, you know, other things like that. So just evaluating and asking the Lord right now is a really good time to do that before we jump back into things. Mm. You know, asking God, what, what do you say is important? And I'm going to invest my time there, you yeah. know. Yeah. And so I think that's really important. One of the sayings in Lisa's book she says, is saying yes all the time won't make me Wonder Woman. It will make me a worn out woman. So mm -hmm. I encourage you, guard yeah. your time and guard your calendar. That will really help um, when you prioritize your relationship with Christ. 
Matthew 6, 19 says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rest destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Mm -hmm. So I think we just really have to prioritize where we're investing. Mm -hmm. um, the next one, I love that Ms. Donna shared this in her video, and it was about having a grateful heart. And I know that that might sound weird when we're talking about you know practical tips, but I really think that is a practical tip because gratefulness really produces love. Mm -hmm. You know, when we are really grateful to the Lord for all that he has done for us, we're gonna love him more. Mm -hmm. And that's just gonna make us desire to spend more time with him, you know? And so um, I just really think it's important to think back on those things that the Lord has done for you. Mm -hmm. And just to remember those things and you will, your love for him will grow mm -hmm. and you'll want to prioritize that time. Mm -hmm. The last, and I feel like the most important tip is just to really pray and ask God where your greatest impact is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that I have limited time, I have limited energy where that I can spend my time, and so I feel like we're all that way as women. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many choices out there today of what we can spend our time doing, but we do have to make choices. We can't do everything and do it well. And so um, one of the prayers that I pray regularly um, because I do know in different seasons it changes. And so I ask the Lord, you know, God, in this time, where is my greatest impact? Mm -hmm. Where am I going to invest that's really going to produce fruit and do kingdom work? Right. And so I ask that of the Lord daily. And then another thing is um, I love how Joy shared last week about just asking the Lord to purge what you don't need from your mm -hmm. life. Now is the time that we need to do that, ladies. As we look forward to what's up ahead, as uh, going back to our jobs, going back to the kids in school, all the other things, you know, mm -hmm. now is the time to ask, Lord, is there something that you want me to purge and take out? Is there something that I don't need to return to? You know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. And so I think that part of prioritizing that time with the Lord is knowing what's on his heart mm -hmm. and just making the time to do those things. You know, life is short. And we have mm -hmm. to choose to invest in things that are eternal rather right. than temporal. So as we wrap up for today, ladies, I just want to challenge you this week to really sit down with your calendar. Mm -hmm. Think about what's to come in the weeks ahead. Prioritize that time. Make your plan for how you're going to spend time with the Lord daily. Um, you know, maybe find a Christian book to start reading that will really enhance your walk with Christ. And I believe that as it says in Deuteronomy 6 verse 3, it says, Hear, O Israel. And observe to do it that it may be well with you and that you will increase mightily. And that's my prayer for us. Mm -hmm. As we go back to what we call our new normal, mm -hmm. um, as we go back into our normal lives, I pray that we will prioritize making the Lord our number one priority. And then we will see our church flourish, our yeah. families flourish, yeah. all those other things. And so, ladies, I challenge you to do mm -hmm. that this week. So thank you for joining with us, ladies. Um, I do want to encourage you to join us next week. We mm -hmm. have some special things yeah. lined up um, that are going to be fun. So join us for that. Also, um, be watching on our Women's Ministry Instagram page. We're going to be doing um, some fun things on Tuesday, so be watching for that. Um, our Instagram is Women of FB. If you don't follow us, please do so. And then um, we'll look forward to seeing you all next week. So, Stacy, would you close us in prayer? Absolutely. God, I just thank you so much for your word, and God, I thank you that through it we can know you more, God. We can know you more intimately. We can grow to love you more. God, you are so worthy of our love, God, our entire love. And I just pray that as women we would take this opportunity to stop and to think and to meditate on what you're trying to speak to us during this time, God. I pray that we would have open ears and open hearts and open eyes to see the things that you're trying to teach us right now during this season, God. I pray that we would learn to love you um, with our entire hearts, with our entire minds, with our entire souls. God, I pray that we would be women who would be obedient. God, that we would give our time to you, Lord, um, that we would just love you completely. And God, I pray that for each of us today that we would think about these things and we would look at what we need to change and the things that we need to keep, God. But I pray that above all, Lord, that we would just love you with our entire being, God. And I just thank you again for this time that we have together as ladies, Lord. And I pray that you would bless every single lady um, at Fayette Fay Baptist um, today, God. And put your hand on them in a special way. And we just love you so much. And we thank you for all that you do for us. In your name I pray. Amen.